Hello YouTube and welcome to this channel. This uh, tutorial is going to be the continuation of the previous tutorial um, on calculating the core loss of the transformer, three-phase transformer using the transient simulations. Um, the last uh, stage we will work on the design and now we have our design and want to go and specify the excitations for that. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to select your coils, um, your coils and uh, so these are the basically the coils that we have and uh, by either press and hold the shift key or the press and hold the control key you can basically go over uh, the different types and select them and after you select them you can either right click on them right easily like that and go on edit and then go on the surface and select the sections or you can go on the modeler and then select surface sections and over here you go and select the XY uh, sorry, X to Z to, because we want the uh, selections to be in this plane and uh, press OK. So now we have all these selections right there ready for us. Um, one thing you can do is you can go and uh, call them uh, like uh, section A, B or C um, or you can leave it like that. I don't really care that much. Um, you can uh, again, you can select them all and uh, right click on them and go on edit and then go into boolean and say separate bodies and then delete all those bodies that you separated already so now we have only one terminal for each Coil. If you're not familiar with this uh, and you think that I'm going too fast over these uh, stages, just go back to the other tutorials. You can find a lot of these tutorials that I put more time to describe what I'm doing exactly at this time. And after you select the, the bodies, now it's time for you to start uh, exciting them. So I'm going to go uh, select the, one of them and select the coil terminal. And on the co coil terminal, you can call it, for example, the terminal. Uh, a um, if you want and then the number of conductors can be 76 uh, conductors and uh, and press OK on this same thing will happen for the other two uh, terminals so let me just do that fast Okay, now uh, after we finish this, uh, we can uh, now we can only change the sections to the terminal uh, for the uh, excitations. We can call them like terminal B, A, B, C. Um, actually, uh, this should be term A. I don't know why you call it terminal. So term A, term B, term C, and now uh, we have to assign the uh, the voltage and excitations. First thing first, we have to assign a windings. Uh, each winding can have one terminal. That's okay. You can have several terminals, but in this case, we only have one terminal. The reason that we have winding is to be able to tell. Um, uh, the answer of that this is a coil that is uh, looping around and uh, there is going to be a voltage, current, excitations and a lot of things. So with the terminal it's just a gate, it's nothing else. So uh, let's go and select our uh, winding and we add a winding, we call it basically winding A. And uh, we, we type the, the winding to be voltage which is the case for a transformer and uh, the initial current is zero the resistance can be any value in this case I'm going to put one million and uh, and the inductance uh, you can leave it like that uh, again this inductance is the parasitic inductance it has nothing to do with the inductance of the coil the inductance of the coil will be calculated separately and you don't need to care about that and uh, the voltage uh, will be for example you can have a V peak. Now if you want to apply a sin sinusoidal way or uh, directly just say cosine of whatever phase and, uh, and whatever frequency but I'm gonna give it uh, a damping factor 
uh, not the damping factor, you see the raising factor. So I'm going to say 1 minus exp of, let's say, minus 50 times time. Again, here time means it's not a variable, it's an intrinsic variable of the answer. And when you say time, it means that the variable time of the calculation of transient. So it's, it's not a new variable that we're building, it's actually t as time. So instead of you writing t, t becomes a variable. Time is in, 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 intrinsic value, variable. So make sure that you use the word time. Okay. So uh, 1 minus exp 50 time. Uh, and then over here you can say now that I define my uh, raising term, so I'm going to say cosine of, let's say, 2 pi, right? And then uh, you say the frequency, which is 60 hertz, 60 hertz times t, which is time again, an intrinsic variable for the for our simulations. I believe that I have to close this. So there we go, and uh, that's it. So press OK. I'm just gonna copy this uh, for my later use. So I'm gonna go and select copy, and uh, that's it. That's the winning A. What's going on? Um, I think I did a mistake here. So over here you have to press times. So let's see. Okay. So V peak is going to be a voltage in terms of V. And now here uh, we said that our uh, transformer is 13.8 uh, uh, kilo uh, volt. Uh, RMS transformer and therefore if we have a three, fi three phase with 13.8 uh, uh, kilovolt uh, RMS so you basically turns the RMS into uh, into the amplitude by times it by square 2 and then you divide it by uh, because it's the RMS of 3 you divide it by a square of Three to get RMS peak value of uh, sorry the peak value of each phase. Uh, I hope that it understands the squared. So let's see if it works. Oh, it works very fine. And uh, and that's it. So if I go to the uh, value, you can see that the value is already uh, calculated. Eleven twenty six seven um, point something. So you can go. You can say eleven to. Uh, 1,120, sorry, 11,268, but anyway, it's not really important. So um, that being said, now you can uh, you can add uh, two other windings, and I'm going to do that, and you will see this in fast forward. By the way, uh, when you made the winding A, you have to go and uh, make sure that it's stranded. Uh, that's very important, because we have 76 turns. Another windings uh, is going to be um, add winding and again a stranded voltage, uh, you know, one milli ohm, and uh, the voltage is going to be the same. Uh, now this time the voltage will be uh, there's a phase difference. So in this case I'm going to give the phase difference of uh, two divided by three um, pi. So that would be um, uh, that would be a bit of a phase difference here, and um, I think I think that's good. Okay, so add oh this gonna be winding B and uh, the rest is fine, and again we will have another winding. Uh, let's call it winding C, and in the winding C. Uh, we will have one. Oh, sorry. This is gonna be zero, and this is exactly one milli ohm. And the voltage is gonna be this time uh, plus four third of the phase. Okay, and that should be all good. And uh, anything else? Uh, that's it. Okay, pretty good. So now it's time to do to add the terminals into our winding. So we say add terminal uh, for the winding one. Uh, we put the terminal A. 
this one uh, terminal uh, we just say terminal B and this one uh, terminal terminal C okay so that that is our terminals that is already added and now uh, we have to do the last part which is basically assigning the mesh for the mesh part um, what you can do is um, you can basically select the core and want to make sure that the core has a very good mesh I have to tell you one important point and that is in the transient solvers there is no automatic adaptive meshing. That means that uh, you have to either link the mesh from the identical model that has been solved before in the magnetostatic or eddy current or you have to alternatively manually mesh uh, uh, create the mesh. So in this uh, example, I'm going to go and uh, basically manually create the mesh and make it to be a perfect mesh. So that's a very, very important notice to know that in the transient simulations, we do not have adaptive, automatic adaptive meshing. That means if the meshing is not, is not good, it would not uh, refine the meshing for you. Okay. If you don't know how to do that, go with the magnetostatic run the simulation there, it will basically run automatically and make create the mesh and then you can link the mesh later on in the setup. Either do that or you just create your own uh, mesh operation. So I'm going to go and select the core at this time and uh, and I want to say that uh, creation inside selection and uh, make it length based and uh, basically you know what you can say is you can say I want to make sure that at least there's 10,000 mesh elements inside my core, uh, which is which is far uh, beyond what you want, and uh, you press OK. Same thing you can do for the three uh, uh, coils that we have. Excuse me. So you basically select the coils, right click on them, and then say inside the materials. And again, you go and say 10,000 uh, elements. You can make it more or less, but that's up to you. Okay and uh, that would be the mesh and it's important to do this step on this uh, you will get like a not a very good result at the end now all these things are going to be done just because we want to have the core loss calculations so in order to get the core loss cal calculation you have to make sure that you are specifying that under the maxwell 3d and excitations uh, sub menu you want to go and select on the set uh, basically the core loss and over there you want to make sure that you are asking the Maxwell to calculate the core loss for the core that we just have. Okay, that is very important. Make sure that you check that. Also, in order to get rid of the warnings, you want to go to the excitations again under the Max Maxwell 3D and uh, you want to make sure that the set eddy current effects and you want to make sure that all of them are unchecked. You do it one time to get rid of the warnings. Okay, and uh, that is very close to what we are going to finish. Uh, lastly, if you want to add a solution setup, and in the solution setup, we want to have a solution that starts. Um, basically, the solution is going to stop at uh, 0 0.01 uh, second. The time step is going to be uh, 500 microsecond and uh, we do want to save fields in order to be able to run more calculations and see the fields and how it works so go on a linear uh, steps and try to save the fields from 008 okay 0 0.08 and uh, stop it at point, uh, zero 0.01 which is the stop time for our calculations and again for each step of calculations we do want to save the fields um, add them into the list and uh, you're good to go uh, one last thing is uh, over here as you can see you can still import the mesh from uh, the magnetostatic or any current uh, uh, simulation that you've done before and you can basically take advantage of automatic adaptive meshing for the same design so you can basically design do the same design in the eddy current or magnetostatic uh, basically simulations run it make the mesh and then import the mesh here
okay I'm not gonna do that because I already ca uh, did the mesh operation so that's fine and uh, when it comes to the solver and the nonlinear residu uh, residue um, you can put it to to make sure that your uh, uh, BH curve is accurately modeled and calculated uh, you can make it uh, uh, quite uh, smaller than what it says here this is uh, 5 milli we can make it 1 micro okay so this is important or else we can't get like a very good result and make sure that you do this step as well and that is it so uh, basically as soon as you save this and run the check you should be able to get all the beautiful check marks here and no warnings here so that is the very last thing that you have to do and now we are going to do the simulations and come back for the next tutorial with simulations and results. Thanks for watching.